Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you've been enjoying my coverage of the Italy tours. I'm going to take a break from that real quick. The Unison Opera, the only thing I have left from that tour is the music clips, but I'm going to put all of the music clips from them, Gold Note, Audio, Flight, and uh, Alari in one video so you can have them all together and listen to for whatever you can glean from that. Gold Note is next, but I wanted to leapfrog it real quick because of the recent... I put out a YouTube short on this. FTC came out with some new regulations for amplifier specs and the wattage and this is probably long overdue updating those standards and i'm hope to have a more formal video with steve mccormick actual amp manufacturer and he can give his perspective on the new promulgations though still the weaknesses of those specs and his perspective as well as mine but it brings up a macro point that I think is even more important to know and get out the way ahead of time before we even tackle that particular spec and for amplifiers is that specs and measurements in general kind of are like politics in audiophile. You don't you normally want to bring it up because what you're going to get is polar extremes. You know, you got these people that think their ears are the best measurement tool. That's all they care about. That's all they know. They're on one side. And then the other people, measurements tell all, be all. Uh, there's no weaknesses in those either, and you get propaganda on both sides, as you see with po politics. And again, the truth is often in between, and there's some truth to both sides. And what I wanted to break down today is a little more enlightenment before we go forward talking about amplifier specs and all. It's just in general how you got to condition your mind from all the noise from the propaganda artist on either side. Let's talk about the one side where measurements don't matter. My ears are the best measurement tool. I don't care about measurements. Well, there is some truth to that because for your taste, it doesn't matter what the specs are. It could be the worst uh, measuring amplifier or speakers or whatever. As long as you're happy with it, your ears are the best measurement tool for your taste. However, when you're going to recommend to other people or do reviews, give you know your two cents, you have to understand that your ears are not the most, uh, you, you're not, you don't have X-Men ability. You're not, uh, especially if you're over 50 years old, <laughs> you know, or even over 30 years old, your ears are not the best tool for reviewing gear on certain metrics that are very important to high fidelity. And, and there's also variables on top of just your age. Uh, go ahead and check the earwax in both of your ears right now. Go ahead and close your uh nose and blow and relieve the pressure all of a sudden everything around you sounds a little bit different if you're on a plane get off a plane the sound of just the pressure alone earwax aging these are ironically when you say i don't believe in mics and measurements and all that kind of stuff well you're kind of arguing against yourself because guess what your ears are go back to biology they are basically a mic uh they're your quasi mic the only difference and they do a lot of the same things that regular mics do and how they, um, you know, perceive sound. The only difference is, you know, a normal mic on a stage that we use to do measurements is attached to a piece of equipment to analyze those electrical results independently. Our ear <laughs> mics are and eardrums are attached to our brain, <laughs> which is also taking in gigabytes of information from all of our senses and all of our thoughts and, you know, even our mood for the day, what we had for breakfast, the thing. We're constantly getting gigabytes of data on top of whatever we're hearing. So for us to be able to isolate on top of the earwax, on top of the pressure, on top of our aging, these mics are not that accurate. Um, and once it gets into your brain and all the other senses it's processing, it's like taking measurements in a room with a normal mic with a jackhammer going. You know, there, it's not to that extreme but you are not going to be as reliable to give other people advice that translates. It's still applicable to you. Whatever you believe, whatever you believe is fine. But a lot of times you have to recognize the weaknesses of your own hearing if you're going to give advice to others. And that's where you can leverage measurements because measurements do have the strength of being more objective. It's just taking the impulses from that mic, putting it into a measurement um parameters for different things and we've established science has established some high fidelity metrics and some things that we know through testing that are for most people sound better 
But does that make measurements the end-all be-all? Should you rank things always on measurements? Do, do measurements really tell you how something sounds? Well, they can tell you how something sounds with given parameters and with that input uh, and the conditions that they use to create that measurement. But often music, playing it, interfacing that speaker with different type of amplifiers, different type of conditions, different types of rooms, there's so many variables that Sometimes these measurements are very primitive in terms of telling you how it's really going to sound to you. One example, most people still take one foot away measurements and calculate a frequency response and an impulse response, just one foot away. And for people designing drivers and stuff like that, uh, yeah, you do need to do this in a vacuum to design these pieces of equipment and take these in anechoic chambers to isolate what you're actually working on as an engineer and designer. But in terms of for an end game audiophile at their listening position, these measurements are pretty much meaningless. <laughs> you know, go ahead and look at your specs uh, of, of your speakers right now or your amplifier in an anechoic chamber, and then go ahead and take measurements at your listening position. Hold the mic and run REW, or if you're better, even better, get Bach and get in your measurement. It won't even be close to what the specs of your speakers are uh, in an anechoic chamber. So those are just limited to certain uses. And same thing with, and then the other problem is with the problem that the FTC is uh, addressing. Some of these specs, some of these measurements are kind of fudged and kind of hiding a little bit what they're trying to get across to imply that they are more powerful than they really are, that they have better statistics than they really do. Like sometimes they'll say, oh, my speakers go down to 25 hertz, but they don't tell you that's the 6 dB point instead of the 3 dB point. There's lots of things that are tough to interpret with the measurements that tell you definitively how it's going to sound. And then the applicability of measurements, again, are based on those conditions and some optimal parameters occurring. And even with the Bach, you have crosstalk cancellation for that the mics measure that goes into your ear. And that's based on test tones of how much it's going to cancel going into your ears for each uh, speaker. But certain songs have no spatial cues. You know, they're recorded in a studio. All that they got the spatial cue is the person's voice to the mic, and they didn't pan any kind of spatial cues into it you're not going to hear spatial cues that aren't, at least with the Bach, and if you have a sound, surround sound processor that forces things around, yes, but you're not going to hear spatial cues, even though you have crosstalk cancellation, uh, if you don't have that in the material. So understanding what the measurements mean is much more important than just arbitrarily ranking on these arbitrary measurements for certain parameters and certain conditions. And that's what I hope to do in a series is help you understand each of these measurements and how if you've got in-ear measurements at your listening position like the Bach has now, that's why I support that product so much because never before have we had measurements that are so applicable now versus one foot away versus you know distortion measurements with amps that are fudged, uh, wattage and all that. We now have people advancing the hobby like Edgar for measurements that really make sense. Um, and again, I'm going to go into that in a little more detail into the weeds for those that you want, want to get into that. But I wanted to balance that equation before we get into that of have some self-awareness. Don't be one of those clowns that think they have X-Men level hearing and carry on this charade that you can hear the direction of a fuse after 30 seconds um, just by your ears that have earwax, pressure, and probably over 50 years old, uh, and compared to a mic that tells you that there is no difference in that fuse change um, direction. You have to have some self-awareness. Hopefully, this I, I, I'm optimistic that maybe this will move the needle with some people, but maybe it's like politics. No matter what you say, you're not going to convince anybody on any side anyway. So, But I hopefully think that, the, well, I hope that this... Uh, resonates with some of you and you will enjoy as we talk in more detail and go into the weeds because this was a big learning curve for me. Yes, I mean, I got to be honest. When I first started, I knew nothing and everybody was pretending to hear, you know, magnificent changes from a fuse. I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'm deaf, you know, but then what you start to learn is that it's a charade. When you really blind test them, they can't hear it. But also what you start to learn, this is what really elevated my learning curve a lot is that I started 
playing with Dirac and now since then with Bach, but started correlating what the measurements were showing and then what I was hearing. And then I could actually go back and forth. I was hearing something weird. Then I would measure and I said, oh, that's where it is. That's where I'm hearing the problem. And once you start realizing that there is a correlation, it's not an antithesis, that there is actually some correlations you can draw with the right measurements. And, you know, with good ears and trained ears, you will start hearing such that now I literally never could do this before. But all I need to do is hear a frequency sweep. I mean, the best test music for me is hearing a full range frequency sweep, and I can pretty much pick out what are some major issues, especially in the bass, right off the bat. Um, you're going to get to that level if you start embracing the fact that there is some value to measurements and training your ear to be even better than you may arbitrarily just think it's magical right now. We all tend to have that ego it's best to leave that ego aside and say, what can I do to train it? What are the limitations of my ear? And then correlate it to measurements that are valuable and that are useful, like in-ear measurements or any kind of measurements at your listening position. That is something that I think will really be helpful to many of you guys who are intellectually honest and really want to experience improvements. That's where you'll really get provable, measurable, and subjective in, uh, improvements in your music. Hopefully you enjoyed, guys. Stay tuned for a lot more coming soon.